Just caught him coming down the road, sir. German pistol, German motorbike. Says he's English. He's no more English than I am, sir. That's all right. I'll deal with him. What's your name? Randall, sir. Bob Randall. Any identification papers? No, sir. You see, I... Now, just answer questions. What's that uniform supposed to be? War correspondent. I was attached to GHQ. I lost them on the road from Brussels. What are you doing with a German motorbike and pistol? I ran into a German motorcycle unit last night, sir. I bumped one of them off and um, helped myself. Where? About 40 kilometres back down the road. They're coming up in force. Got anything to prove all this? No, sir. Pity. What newspaper do you represent? Gazette. What were you before you became a war correspondent? Chief reporter, sir. I started as a sports writer. Football, rowing, racing. Racing, eh? Yes, sir. Hmm. What's the station when Newbury races? Racecourse station, sir. Newbury's just beyond. Mm. Anyone can know that. What won the gold trophy in 36? Gold trophy in 36. Uh... Turkish delight. She won by shorthead from Lively Boy with Maguire up. She made a bad start. As soon as she got into the straight, she came up like lightning. She finished the game as she started. Maguire never even showed her the whip. Greatest filly of her generation. I had a tenor on her. I owned her. You're Colonel Edwards. I saw you lead her in. I wrote a piece about her. Then it'll be back there in her press book. Metcalf. Sir. Make a pass out for Randall, will you? Yes, sir. Where the hell to? I don't know. Better head for Dunkirk. You can go back with the last batch of wounded. Sir. What is it, Signaler? Well, message from Div HQ, sir. Read it. Enemy armoured division headed by motorcycles advancing from the northwest along the Aysbrook Road. Dive bombers concentrating in support. Expect to attack any moment. All units in this sector must hold on at all costs and fight the last man. Send a message received. Get them in out. Don't fool them. Tell them exactly what the position is. I'll be out in a minute. Have a last word with them. Very good, sir. And uh, best of luck. Thank you, sir. Same to you. Last ambulance will be going in a few minutes. If you don't mind, sir, I'd rather stay here and kick in with you. You're a non-combatant. I know. So are the women and children the Germans machine gun on the roads. This is a total war. The idea of non-combatants is a little bit out of date. That's why I want you to go back to England. You're a newspaper man. Write that in your paper. I'm afraid it's too late for us to do anything about it now. Go back and tell them what happened here in France so it can't happen there. I'm giving you an order. Very good, sir. Goodbye, and I'm glad we met. That's all right. And the best of luck. Oh, by the way, if you're back before the 12th, there's a son of Turkish delight running in the derby. Newmarket this time. Put a bit on him for me. Don't suppose he's got an earthly, but well. I wouldn't like him to run unbacked. The ambulance is ready to move off, sir. Thank you, Corporal. 
Try and contact divisional headquarters, Signaler. Sir. Goodbye. Good luck, sir. Not now, Jimmy. Sorry, Miss. Miss Hartley! I've been writing my humorous column daily for 15 years. That is allowing for public and private holidays, 350 columns a year, making a total of 5,250. Now, 5,250 times I've asked you to put six sharp HP pencils on my desk. And 5,250 times I've failed to find them. But I always put them there, Mr. Farnfield. Someone must take them. I'm not interested in the depredations of my thieving colleagues. I'm solely interested in six sharp HP pencils of reasonable length. Yes, Mr. Farnfield. What's the matter with her? Have I said anything anybody take exception to? She thinks her brother may be a Dunkirk. Oh. Oh, dear. The news tape? No. Anything through yet, George? It's only the GHQ communique. We're still fighting a rearguard action. Of course, there's the Ministry of Information bulletin informing us that the evacuation's begun. Don't read it to me or I'll go mad. This is the biggest operation of its kind in history. Our lads are out there on that beach waiting to get back. They have fathers and mothers and sweethearts at home wanting to know what's happened to them. And we're letting them down. Yeah. Oh, there's been no news from Randall for over a week. What about our Dover man? Not a cat in hell's chance. The line's choked. Military priority. Train coming in on platform three. Please stand back from the barriers. Train coming in on platform four. Please stand back from the barriers. Register at the local police station first thing tomorrow morning. Thank you, Miss. Any paper? Can I do anything to help you? Uh, no, thank you. I have some friends here. Good luck. Bad luck, John. Where do you come from? I am from Liège. Liège. Got anywhere to go? Yes. I have some friends here. I'll give you a lift. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Did you have any difficulties? One refugee is very like another if he has to write papers. Mm. You've arranged where I am to go? 273 Bra Avenue, Hampstead. You asked for Mr. Stannard. Good. I have much to do. He must be very proud of the work your department's done in France. Where there are few criminals and enough fools, it isn't very difficult. Mm. I wonder how you'll find it here. Bob, my lad. Get to see you, Bob. Quick, get out your bottle of whiskey. He's all in. I'm okay. I've nearly given you up, Bob. Thank God you're safe. Sit there now. Don't talk yet. Where's that drink? Where have you come from, Bob? Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Sure you're all right? He's a sick man. Never mind the story. Look at him. No, no. Why do you think I came here? You got any space left for me, Denton? The whole front page, my boy. Okay. Give me some paper. No, just sit there and tell us, Bob. British Army, 300,000 of them, crowding on the beaches of Dunkirk. Stop. They're being bombed and machine-gunned all the time, and they can't hit back. It isn't their fault. For ten days, they fought like tigers, meeting tanks with bayonets, 
dive bombers with rifles. It wasn't only the German army they had to fight. They had to fight panic and confusion behind their lines. Fifth colonists giving false orders. Refugees flooding the roads. Traitors within the gates. I was lying on the beach there with them. Some of them waded out with me to a little boat that used to do six minute trips along the south coast. And they said to me, you've got to get back to England and tell them there what's happened here. So it can't happen there. That's the story they told me to tell. Just that. Set that up as it stands, every word of it. Henry, you'll have to kill that leader. We're going to have a new one. It mustn't happen here. Who's that? Am I delirious? It's Carol Bennett, the new girl on the fashion page. Fashion page? What the smart girl will wear for the invasion, eh? Oh, we simply can't lose the war. Dear old England. Just the same. Looks like big stuff. I know, I know. I've just got it on the phone. George, I came up with the chief this morning. Oh, uh, yes? He was reading our paper, George, and do you know what happened? No, what? He fell asleep over it. At this apocalyptic moment in the history of mankind, with all hell let loose, I discovered that I'm editing a sleeping draft. Yeah. No. The chief must have had a bad night. Hey, Bennett. I had a letter from your father this morning. He wants to know how you're doing as a hard news reporter. Well, what did you tell him? Oh, I said you're doing all right. Well, I haven't had anything printed yet. Oh, never mind. Stick at it. You're learning. He wants me to get you out to America to work as his assistant at the press bureau. I know. Well, how do you like the idea? I love it. Well, I'll see if I can fix it. If you're up to it. But I'm not letting loose any half-big journalists on America. Though heaven knows there are plenty in this office I could gladly spare. Hey, Wigmore. Yes, Mr. Denton? Hello, where's the fire? I have to stand by like this when there's an alarm on, Mr. Denton. Uh, you say here that owing to some jiggery-pokery in the orbit of Uranus, we must expect the war in the air to intensify. Oh, do I? Well, it's about time Uranus read the newspapers. It has intensified. You're supposed to be forecasting the future, not writing a running commentary. Oh, Farmfield. <clears throat> Extract from your funny column. It's headed, for some reason which escapes me, funiculi, funicula. Our bombing raid caused panic in Naples the other night. I am reliably informed that even Vesuvius was quite put out. Farmfield, do you think that's funny? Frankly, yes. Ah, that's funny. Miss Hartley! George, circulation doesn't matter anymore. Advertising doesn't matter anymore. We're down to four pages and reality. We've got to help to switch this country into high gear. For once, we're going to be the voice of the people. We've got to fight this war, not just sit back and let the war write the paper for us. What the heck are you doing here? <laughs> Fine. I thought they weren't letting you out till next week. They're not. Huh? Can I see you? Yeah, of course. I'm glad you're back, Bob. I need you here. We're short-handed enough as it is. But are you quite sure you're fit? You look pretty seedy to Never me. Never mind all that. I want to know what the blazes you're boosting this meeting for. Huh? Oh, you mean the People for Peace Society. Oh, it's not a bad story. Why did you expose these peacemongers? Oh, they're just harmless cranks. They're the same kind of rats and mules that gnawed and kicked France to pieces. Why give them space? Just news? That's what I meant when I came back from Dunkirk. It mustn't happen here. These stop the war meetings are playing Hitler's game. You can't approve of that. Of course I don't approve of it. But we don't want to crack down on free speech. But it isn't free speech. It's out and out defeatism. Now listen, you're a sick man. You don't want to get excited. What do you want anyway? I want to open people's eyes to what's going on. I'm going down to this meeting and tear a story out of this peace jamboree. All right, if it'll make you feel better. It will. Then get out of my sight. See you later. Where's he off to? You've got to tear a story out of that peace jamboree. Ladies and gentlemen, let me assure you I am not a fanatic. I do not even pretend to be an idealist. I lay claim only to a modicum of practical common sense. Nothing more. Today we see our former prosperity, our lawful commerce, the orderly stratification of society. In fact, everything that goes to make life worth living hindered, forgotten, or tied to the blood-bespattered wheels of the chariot of Mars. Is this common sense? 
In the words of that great 18th century thinker uh -huh. and liberal, Charles James Fox, let us meet the enemy with reasonable approaches, and moderation will accomplish more than the most strenuous resistance. Don't tell me you're a member of this outfit. Do you mind? What's the idea? I'm getting a story. Shh. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present our next speaker. That brilliant scientist, Professor Spaggart. You're out of your depth here. Unless, of course, you're studying the fashions. Go away. You're like the professor. Ladies He's one gentlemen. of the most profound thinkers of our generation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are a great many fools in this world. I take it that is common ground. <laughs> Personally, I always say there's no fool like an ethnological fool. I'm, of course, an ethnologist myself. <laughs> what I have come here to point out is there is scientific evidence of the mental and physical superiority of the Nordic peoples, of whom the outstanding representatives are Great Britain and Germany. He's a profound thinker, I'm Einstein. I hasten to say that I hold no brief for Herr Hitler myself. Anthropometrically speaking, I should classify him as a very indifferent artist. I can do something with that peace meeting. That's why I've been cultivating with the little secretary. I know he's got the wrong idea, but he's allowed to preach what he believes in, and that's... The a... love of my don't start that tribute to democracy stuff. Those people listening to the bunk we heard this afternoon are helping the Nazis. There aren't enough of them to make any difference. There were enough of them in Europe to make a very big difference. This is England. If I thought there was the slightest chance of you getting any of this stuff in the paper, I'd suggest you went back to fashions. Good night, Ted. Good night. Good night, Mr. Proud. Good night, sir. Oh, just one moment, Miss Van Heusen. I don't want to keep you, but if you have a copy of the Howard Wilkes lease ready. You see, I shall be working late tonight. Well, did the people of the peace have a good meeting? Yes, uh, that is. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank goodness some of us know there's a war on. I'm afraid we shall never see eye to eye over my principles. I hope not, indeed. No time for peacemongers never had. Miss Van Hoosen. Oh, yes, Mr. Stannard. Yes, you were quite right, Mr. Hayter. The owners are responsible for the exterior repairs. And as in this case, Stannard and Falter are the owners of the house, you can rest assured we shall put them in hand at once. Thank you, Mr. Stannard. I'm sorry to bother you at a time like this. It's just a matter one likes to get straight before signing. Quite. I'll send you the contract as soon as it's engrossed. Good night. Good night. Good night, Miss... Uh... Good night, Mr. Hayter. Good night, Mr. Trapes. Good night. Uh, Trapes, Miss Van Hoosen, you really must stop this bickering. And I want you to understand that there's no penalty upon opinions in this office. Nobody could disapprove of these uh, peace people more than I do. But everyone's entitled to their beliefs, however pernicious. That's all. I'm sorry. It's very good of you, sir. I assure you that all the time that I give to my voluntary work is more than made up. I should be working tonight until 8.30 to make up for the two hours that I lost at the meeting. You'd better make it nine o'clock, Trapes, because according to my calculations, you were away for two hours and a half. Oh, uh, very good, Mr. Ponder. Mm -hmm. You coming my way, Ponder? Uh, uh, I'll drop you off. You staying there? No, not tonight, Mr. Stannard. I'm going to take these home with me. There is still so much for me to learn here. All right, we'll learn how we do it. Good night, Marshal. Good night, sir. Getting used to our English ways, Mr. Marshall? Oh, yes, yes. I have a pipe. And yesterday, look, I bought for myself an umbrella. Oh, that'll be useful. It often rains in England. Yes. Oh, you mustn't open it indoors. It's unlucky. Oh, is it really? Oh, that's terrible. Well, then I must not do it. <laughs> Good night. Good night. I'm sorry, Carol. I'm not saying that your story is bad or that your angle on it is wrong. Boy, it's just the bobs. It's better journalism. It's aggressive, positive. Peace Apostle bolts when siren sounds. It's got punch. Here you are. Now, don't worry. I worked for a whole year on this paper before I got a line in. I had a dumbbell of a news editor, same as you have. Well, this is a great opportunity for you to say I told you so. Well, don't take it to heart. We've all got to learn. You'll get a story printed yet. Big story Randall's is. I remember I contact man's on the phone now. Why? I'd like the story killed. What? Why? 
Apparently they're squeamish. Don't want them attacked. Oh. Bob? Yep. Shut up. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Bob. I don't think we can use that story. Why not? Censorship wants us to do them a favor. Don't be silly. Why? I'd better ask Gates. He's on the phone. Hmm. Carol, where's that story of yours? In the West over basket. Well, please don't. Let's have it. I will. Hello? Listen, Yates. What's the matter with my story? What? But... Well, don't tell me it helped the enemy. Yes, of course I attacked it. That's the whole point. Well, then who did kill it? Home security. Here it is. Hmm. Maybe it's not so bad. Freedom of speech in beleaguered Britain. Voltaire. I come to think of this rather a subtle angle. Yes, we don't need this. Or this. Or this. Edit democracy at work and put a query out of it. Here we But you've only left a paragraph. You know who canned that story of mine? No. Home security. You aren't going to print this junk, oh, are you? We can't use yours. And it isn't junk. The whole thing's typical. Some egg-bound official terrified of causing alarm and despondency by printing a story with some guts in it. Listen, Reddington, I'm going down to the Ministry tomorrow and I'm going to find the ostrich responsible and kick him in his blind spot. <laughs> Mr. Randall? Yes? He's waiting, sir. Very good. Mr. Lamb is the gentleman you want. He'll see you now. Only 22 minutes and 14 seconds from a standing start. Now I know why they call it a war of movement. Where's his office? One moment. You must go with the messenger. Mr. Randall for Mr. Lamb. This way, sir. Oh, yes, stand in, Mr. Lamb? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Um, Randall? Hello. Hope you weren't kept waiting. Only 20 minutes. Good, I'm so glad to hear that. Oh, excuse me. Hello, yes? No, no, this is not Mr. Fortescue's office. No, he, he moved downstairs six weeks ago. I thought I'd made that quite clear. Goodbye. They keep on doing that. Look, I understand that your department asked the Gazette to kill my people for peace story. People for peace? Oh, yes. Yes, that's quite right. Well, why was that? Well, it was... There's a warning. Purely a request, excuse me. No compulsion or anything. I want to know why. You'd better follow me. But where? Down into the shelter. The shelter? What, what, now? Regulations, you know. Between ourselves, it's worse at the Ministry of Information. They blow whistles there. Oh, do they? Yes, Look, it's Mr. just a passing phase, you know. I hope so. Oh, they're certain to alter the regulations. You're from the Gazette, aren't you? Yes. Uh, what that I want to... Uh, that, 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 that astrologer fellow you've got on your paper, what, uh, what's his name? Wigmore. Is he reliable? No. Oh, what a pity. Mm. We'll have to go down the lift. Do you mind? After you. Why was my story canned? The powers that be think it's inopportune. Inopportune? My department thinks it would be a mistake to attack these Johnnies. It gives them a false importance. But they're complete defeatist. Isn't that important? Uh, ours not to reason why. Well, if it isn't the British public's business to reason why, who the hex is it? I see your point. Well, can't something be done about it? Yes. You could write a letter to the minister. Look, I'm not one of the little princes in the tower, you know. You can't suffocate me as easily as this. Uh, just a minute. You can't go without one of these. Thank you. That's all right. Hello, yes. No. No, this is not Mr. Fortescue's office. He moved downstairs six weeks ago. I thought I'd made that quite clear. Thank you. Goodbye. Come in. I had quite a job getting rid of that newspaper man. Afraid he's going to be a nuisance.
Mr. Haight is expecting you. Thank you, Miss. London docks this afternoon. Same stuff as Portsmouth? No, stronger. But if we can't drop the panic with the bombs, it wouldn't have half the effect. Now wait till it's all over, then get rid of as many as you can over the area. Right, Gunner. Who's helping with the distribution? I've got half a dozen of the boys. Are they all right? If your money's all right, they are. Good. Well, don't come round here for a day or two. Well, what is it, Bob? I'm busy. I come to tell you I'm leaving. Now, don't tell me those pirates over at the Echo have made you an offer at a time like this. No, I'm through with Fleet Street. I'm going to join the RAF. Eh? I've just left the recruiting office. But, Bob, you're not fit yet. Besides, you're doing a useful job here. Tell that to Whitehall. Tell it to Home Security. I just left one of those prized bureaucrats. I've been trying to shake him out of his pipe dream. Here. Yeah. They're not interested. The band's still on. If I can't attack a thing like that, then the sooner I get into a real job, the better. Better think it over, Bob. I've thought it over and I'm leaving. Hear that? Was that bombs or guns? Both. Bet they've broken through, several hundred. James Estuary, making for the docks. I'm off. Where to? Docks. I thought you were leaving. I am, as soon as I've had my medical. Wait a minute, I'm coming with you. Why don't you wait and read about it in tomorrow's gazette? Now, wait a minute, Carol. I have something else for you. All right, I'll get my things. We want this covered from every angle, George. Yes. Mason, cover the river path load. Atkins, get off right the docks, they are beat. Right away, sir. Are to take a battle with us, will you? In my column, September 1st, you can't say I didn't get this right. Well, mere guesswork. Now, it's remember, this is the first time that London civil defence has been tested. Watch how they take it. See where it strips up. All right. I wish I were going with you. I bet you do. Where do I go? Nowhere. This isn't a girl's job. We promised your father we'd look after you until he sent for you. You mean I'm supposed to sit here and keep their seats warm? No, I told you I got something for you. You get down to the Minister of Food and Beard Walton in his den. The Ministry of Food are considering the question of price control for herrings. The present price of which for cran creel or caskets... Well, that ought to thrill the nation. There's a good story in it, Carol. An army isn't the only thing that marches on its stomach. Your courage, your cheerfulness, your resolution will bring us victory. Carol, they call every brigade in London. There must be hundreds of them. Look out, my body. Come on, Mum, she'll be all right. Hey, do the way, they do the way. Come on, do the way. Hey, where do you think you're coming to? Where's the worst part? Round the Albert docks. Right, let me through. Press. Well, sorry, no one's allowed past here except fire service and civil defence. The roads are blocked. But I've got to get through. Sorry, it can't be done. Get away. Get away. Get back. Get back. Hey, hey, Bennett. Here, yeah, hold you on. You dirty double crosser. Is there any other way through? You could try down the other side, sir. Well, they get back. Get back. Come on. Get back. Get back. Come on. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Come on. newest desk. Mr. Reddington? Yes, this is Carol. Herrings? No, this has nothing to do with herrings. It's out of the docks uncovering this story. Listen, for the first time since September 1666, London is burning. But this time it wasn't started by careless Look, cut out the history. Give it the facts. Listen, I'm telling the story in my own way, the way I've seen it. The Nazi airmen had hoped to rain death on the hill. They were wrong. London civil defences have stood the test. Oh, George, I wish you could have seen these farmers. When you think how everybody laughed at them. There's nothing more we can do about it. Where's the nearest telephone box? In Ship Street. You can't go there. We just roped it off and walled you to collapse. Right. In the opinion of the fire service, it will be impossible to subdue the flames before nightfall. <coughs> but they're confident that... Operator? Operator! Operator, don't cut me off. This is the most important call. Hello. 
Hello, hello. Tell her to get on with it. Operator! Operator! Does it hurt, chum? Of course it does. What do you think I am, asbestos? Have you seen the Gazette reporter, a girl? Oh, yes, she went down Ship Street looking for a telephone. Thanks. Is this Ship Street? Yes, that's right. Come on, they don't argue. Come on, they don't argue. Did you finish your story? No. Keep an eye on this young lady. She's what you call a nervous type. Hey, I paid for that call. Oh, you are there. Hello. <coughs> There's been a slight interruption. I'll finish it, but remember this is Bennett's story. Yes, Randall. Yes. Well, what's happened to the girl? What happened to Carol Bennett? Oh, she's all right. Oh, she's all right. Oh, good. Yes, go on, Bob. Carry on. Yes. Yet, Governor. Look here, half a minute ago. Sure. Hello. Look here. So that's what she was up to while we was down in the cellar. I think mean, it's a good job bombs don't take you like that, any. <laughs> okay, cop. Just come in. Thanks. Well, what's it going to be? Pint of old and mild. A bit breezy today, isn't it? Mm. Oh, excuse me, ladies and gents, there's still a door. Sorry. It's my idea, Governor. That's all right. Ah, come on, what are you going to have? No, this is my round. What'll it be? I can knock back a quart without tasting it. Find a bit of I'll just have a cigarette. Might you have a look at our kittens, born in the blitz? I certainly would. Come on, they're over there. Yeah? Here's luck, all. <laughs> Good luck. Strikes me you'll need it. Why? Well, what chance have you got? How long do you think we're going to stick this sort of thing? We'd stick it all right. Heard what they did to Warsaw? Bombed it flat. Thousands killed. Rotterdam the same. Bombed it flat. Thousands killed. It'll take them a heck of a long time to bomb London flat. That's what I think. I'm being realistic. It's more than flesh and blood can stand. Day after Shut day... Shut trap. Listen to me. I joined the fire service that does the army. But I just found out I've got to do my bit of fighting too. And funnily enough, I don't mind it. There's lots don't feel the same as you. I never did like the look of your face. From the first minute you came into my house without using that door out. Sorry, dear. Come into my window. He's came out of his pocket. What's this? The People for Peace. The People's Peace Society, five minutes after an airing. Well, what's the matter? That fellow was a paid agitator. You've got to be in your bonnet. Perhaps I have. Where are you going? Punch a couple of noses, maybe. I do for you. Is this one of yours? That's right, that's our latest. Do you want some? Anyone in there? Yes. Who? Mr. Trapes, our secretary. He'll do. I'm always delighted to meet any of our members that can find time to call. You wanted me? Oh, yes. Uh, no, I only wanted a um, membership form. Certainly, certainly. Give the young man half a dozen, Miss Pitter. Goodbye, Mr. Trapes. I won't keep you any longer. Oh, goodbye. Do come again. It's so encouraging to meet with such enthusiasm for the cause. Goodbye. Is there anything you'd like to know, sir? Yes, but I'll come back later. Rather embarrassing, wasn't it? Yes, it must have been. Like a drink. What? Come around to my flat, it's not far. Mr. Hater, may I speak to you at Sergeant? Oh, Trips, come in here, will you? What can I do for you? Mr. Hater, a young man has just left this pamphlet at the office. Mm -hmm. A page has been added about air raids and civilians. I never passed it, and already some copies have been distributed. It's really most irregular. Oh, that's all right, Trebs. I arranged it. 
<laughs> Bit of a rabbit hut, isn't it? Hardly room to swing a cat. <laughs> I always think that sounds such a dreary oxidation, don't you? <laughs> yes, well, sit down, won't you? No, yeah, thank you. Oh. Name your poison. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are you going to drink? Beer, gin, whiskey? Oh, um, whiskey. Whiskey, good. Splash? Thank you. You know, Randall, you rather caught me with my pants down this afternoon, didn't you? Apparently. It'd be a bit awkward if it came out. I mean, my being a civil servant and all that. I can imagine it. Cheers. I suppose it must come out. And how? You won't be able to censor this one. All over the front page, eh? Yes. With a photograph of one of these things. Seen them before? Yes. Well, that leaves me no alternative. I'm afraid I shall have to tear off the false whiskers, you see. I'm by way of being a security officer. What do you mean? And the fact is, we're far too interested in these peace people to let you fellows fool around them just now. See these? Brought to me straight from the docks. It's a new issue. Got out by somebody with a definite purpose and a nice line of advance information. That's what I thought. Then why in heaven's name don't you run trapes in? Trapes? <laughs> oh, no. It's the people using trapes I'm after. You mean the Germans are at the back of it? Well, it's their method. Rumor, panic, disaffection. All boiling up for invasion. I know, I've had some. What a story. <laughs> yes, but not for your paper, old man. Trapes seems harmless enough. Clark, a respectable firm, bachelor, lives at Marchman Street, Bow. Yes. I've told you all this because, well, you put me in a spot. Also, I think you're a man I can trust to keep it under your hat and out of print. I'll do that all right. Good. By the way, do you have no decent laundry? Mine's been taken over by the military. I sent him a couple of shirts last week and got back a pair of socks and a balaclava helmet. I'll make inquiries. <laughs> I'm lost without my wife. Can you find your way down, all right? Yes, easily, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get all the pictures you can, Bill. This is one of the great days. People will still be looking at them in hundreds of years to come, wondering if the human race had gone mad. I have a notion they haven't lit these fires for nothing. You're right, Bob. It'll be nice to be in the RAF. Applied for fighters. But I think I'll ask to be transferred to bombers. He saved my life this afternoon. Quiet, you. That was a fine story you did on the docks. But I sent her out to get a fine story about herrings. George, this is history. No time to cry stinking fish. You get along home, my dear. And stay home tonight. You've done enough. I'm writing to your father that it's a newspaper woman we're sending out to join him. Oh, a large whiskey. Hello. Venus still in the house of Mars? I don't wish you'd reserve your brilliant quips for your column. Heaven knows it could do with it. Oh. I could retort in kind with more. I could point out the absurdity of criticism by a multi-bank stargazer of the most successful columnist in Fleet Street. But it won't be so undisciplined. In my head, I was going to offer you a quick one at Crown. And I may add that I wouldn't take it at any price. Feud still on? Times when I could strike that man. Coming down the road? Not now, man. Perhaps a bit later. What do the stars say for tonight, Wiggy? <sighs> well, uh, nothing so far. Sounds ominous. Whatever Wigmore says, I'm afraid we're in for a bad night. Mm. I'd go home and put my head under the bedclothes if I were you. I'm sure you would. That'll be you, miss. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, miss. Are you standing at late my final? I could have sworn there was a curse here. Huh? Are you standing at late my final? Come along, please. Taxi. Are you standing late, my final? Sammy, you should have gone home before. Ask him another word. Are you standing late, my final? Are you standing late, my final? Ow! Are you standing late, my final? Are you standing late, my final? Did you tell you if you don't pick up the note? No, I didn't. Thank you. Hello, Bob. 
What's the matter? Some idiot took a running kick at me in the blackout. Look, I thought you said you were going home. Some idiot nearly took my ankle off. Oh, we'll have a drink. What's yours? Large whiskey, please. Large whiskey, please. Plenty to drink. No, thanks. I'm going in to eat. Eat? <laughs> the woman's an eccentric. Thank you. You know, I've got a feeling it'd be a good idea to get tanked up tonight. Of course. Why tonight more than the other night? Well, because our tame soothsayer says it's going to be peaceful. Oh, thanks for the warning. Same again for me, please, miss. Yes, I hope in time to be unconscious of danger. Or oh, just unconscious. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> so long. Hello, man, what you can have? Mine's a double start. Oh. Mind if I sit here? No. What's that? Well, it's a local superstition that this guy was salmon. This wall's full of surprises. George? Yes, sir? I think I'll risk a chunk of that. Very good, sir. Quite a day it's been. It isn't over yet. I'm afraid you're right. Why didn't you go home? Oh, I don't know. I really ought to thank you. What for? Falling me out of that corn box. Oh, don't mention it. I didn't even have time to think. Lucky for me, perhaps. Keen on your jaw, won't you? Runs in the family. I heard your father's a pretty good journalist. I'm going out to join him soon in America. To work? Mm-hmm. He's attached to the British Press Bureau. I'm trying to get as much experience as I can in the time. You should be able to do a pretty good job, aren't you? I hope so. I should feel a bit like a deserter, though, especially now things are beginning to happen. Well, that's purely a sentimental point of view. Think so? George. This salmon lives up to its appearance. Does it, sir? Yes, take it away, please. By the way, did you punch any noses? Hmm? The people for peace, Mr. Trapes, for instance. Trapes? Oh, him, no. Well, you went round there, didn't you? Yes. But you didn't punch him on the nose? No. I'm glad. I still think he's completely sincere and comparatively harmless. I disagree. Oh, he's a dull subject, forget it. I know I'm right. On the contrary, I know you're wrong. You'll be telling me next trips as a Nazi agent. What was that? Dot. I'll say bomb. I'm afraid we're in for a bad night. You wait here. Nope. I'd better get through to Reddington and find out where he wants me to go. Waiter! Double brandy, quick! As soon as I finish mine. I thought so. They're raiding the East End again. Reading wants me to go down. Set up with George for me, will you? Wait a minute. I'm off. Well, the going's good. Oh, George, keep the change and my hat. Thank you very much, miss. I'll call for it tomorrow. Oh, taxi. Taxi? Yes, sir. Mind if I come with you? You'd better not. Uh, wait till, sir. Bo, or the nearest you can get. But we're not round that way in the government. I know, but we've got a job to do. Reporters. Uh, why pick on me? Hey, wait a minute. Too late, I'm in. All right. <clears throat> further east. That's music in my ears, chum. We are reporters. I'm afraid you have to go on foot, sir. Any incidents in the sector, officer? Plenty. Ask at the ambulance station. But mind the glass underfoot, all the windows are gone. Well, this is going to change the shoe stars. We'll all have to wear clothes. Come on, let's get close by me. Buzz off. How's tea coming along, Martin? Fine. Keep boarding in about 20 minutes. Reminds me, I was meant to fix a gas ring down here. You were promising us that gas ring for weeks. I'm always forgetting to buy the tubing. Why did we come in? With pleasure. The reporter's having a look round. I hope we're not in the way. Not a bit. What's it like out there? It's pretty hot. Press some bread and sardine. No oh, thanks, just had a meal. I'll have a cigarette then. Thank you. Ambulance station D here. But I sent one half an hour ago. Oh. Badly? All right, I'll send another one. Bye. Cook and Wilson, go down to Marsham Street right away. Neiman Garrett went there ages ago. Yes, I know, but House came down in front of them and they had rather a smash. Were they badly hurt? Not badly, I don't think. You'd better go by Ginner's Park Tube, the other way's blocked. Hundreds of people are rushing down the tube there. Maybe against orders, but I don't blame them. Why don't you go down to the tube for a bit? It might be interesting.
Where's your father? Oh, there he is. Go on, off you. Go on. Where is the best place to go? Better try down the end, miss. Come on, we'll find him. I hope so. If he had a couple more, we could challenge Stop the Mock Spurs. <laughs> Hello, Grandma. How do you feel? Plenty, I'm Never mind. We'll make you a nice cup of tea in a minute. <laughs> I was standing in the four ale bar when the first one come down. And when I got in here, I found I'd still got the glass in me. And just you and the kids? In about six hours. Father, I can't see him anywhere. Too large, Miss Street. They've got me right in the centre. Why are they thinking to a job getting through? I've lost all my treasures. I've got I sent him well, of course. You're frightened. Well, I never did like him anyway. He was always afraid of his own shadow. Yes, a bit. Plenty of room here. Make yourselves at home. All right. Are we all here? I hope so. Would you mind holding a bit for me, Miss Scott? Thanks, mate. Here's this. I'll take him now. Shall you come out of Yes, I think so. It ain't exactly home from home. It's better than Brighton Beach on Bank Holiday night. And we used to do that for furniture. Thank you, Miss. Bless you. Let me go. Miss. Miss. Mr. Trims. I know you. You're Miss Bennett. Yes, we met at your peace meeting. Peace. Funny, isn't it? Are you hurt? He's had a nasty shaking. You blast. I think I'll have another try to get an ambulance. Would you mind, Miss? I'm all right. They got my home. They wiped out Marchman Street. Why? That's what I want to know. Why? Now, try and drink a little of this, Mr. Trapes, and relax. No, no. I've got something to say. I'm glad you're here, Miss Bennett. I was wrong. We were all wrong. Peace. We can't make peace with that. Can we? No, we can't. And we shan't. We've got to let everyone know. Yes, that's right. You can do that, can't you? In your paper. Yes, of course, if you agree. You can publish what I've said? Yes, a complete statement, if you'll sign it. Yes, I'll do that. Yes. Any casualties? Yes, would you look at this, gentlemen? Yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right. He's badly shocked. It's the blast. Yes, give me a hand with him, nurse, will you? Up. What? You won't forget? No, of course I won't. Where are you going to take him? To the East London, miss. If we can get him in. I'll be there without fail in the morning. Oh, we'll get him in somehow. Come on, Come on well, we'll look after you. Take it easy. Of course, darling. <laughs> Ain't they lovely, miss? Look as if they take a long leash on this place, don't they? Perhaps they have. <laughs> I only forecast tendencies. That's a hell of a tendency. I think I must be allergic to the bomb used to bring me out in a rash. You stop whistling, Jim. It's all right. He's only whistling to keep my courage up. George, we're going to press an hour earlier. All oh, right. Distribution is going to be the big problem now. I know. Are all your chaps accounted for? Well, Mason's back. Atkins is still somewhere at the docks. There's been no word from Randall. Probably can't get a call through. That sort of thing is going to become part of all our lives. Mm, it's cheerful. Oh, we'll adapt ourselves to it somehow. We've got to tell ourselves that this is the consequence of Hitler's first defeat. The RAF boys have slaughtered them in the daylight. Now it's up to John Citizen to stand up to him in the dark. Oh, here's Carol. You know, where the devil have you been and who told you you could be out on this? Tell me, have you got a story? I've got a dozen. I've been down in the shelters. Mr. Devlin, Don't you know, tell I'm me here. now. Get it down. Where's Randall? I left him when I went below, isn't he, Beth? No, I hope the boy's all right. How do you feel? Uh, I'd give a month's pay to hear a lovely long walk here. Confidentially, so would I. Good evening, Mr. Randall. Bit more than a nuisance raid tonight, eh, sir? Yes. Is Miss Bennett back yet? I think she's just gone upstairs. Oh, good, thanks. You never know, miss. 
see your back. You're very observant tonight. Oh, there you are, Randall. Are you all right? Yes. You are a skunk letting Bennett go with you on a night like this. All right, get on with it. Quite a busy night, isn't it? You've got a story. Oh, big stuff. You got anything? Naturally. Pretty noisy outside. I think I'd better see you home. Won't that take you out of your way? Oh, it's, it's quite all right. Good night, Miss. Good night, sir. Good night. Thanks. Where do you go from here? My room. Lincoln's in. Oh, I'm taking you right out of your way. Oh, never mind that. I've got plenty of time. Can you manage Lincoln's in? Yes, certainly, sir. It's pretty busy down that way just now, sir. Started up over there a couple of minutes ago. Oh. Well, perhaps you better come in and let's quieten down. Well, you probably want to turn in, don't you? No, well, I'm not going to sleep it. Good night. Oh, be careful of the lights, Miss Carroll. My sister told me that as soon as those awful Germans see a light, they drop a bomb straight on it. I've been very careful, Mrs. Duncan. Oh, Mr. Randall's just coming in for a drink before he goes home. Good evening. Good evening. You must excuse me catching me like this, but my sister says the safest place in the house is under the stairs. She's quite right. We'll soon be over now. I've made you up a bed under the table. My sister says that's a safe place, too. Oh, thank you very much. Good night. Good night, dear. Good night. Good night, sir. What would you like? Whiskey, gin, beer? Beer, I think, please. Let me do that. How about you? Hot milk. Mrs. Donkin's sister says it's good for me. You must have written a whale of a story tonight. That makes you think so. I know the look, a sort of cryptic self-satisfaction. I didn't do too badly. Cheers. Cheers, luck. Nice room. Hmm. I used to be very proud of it. Doesn't seem to matter much anymore. Nothing does. It's almost coming out of this year war. Funny how one's ideas change. I remember thinking when the war started. Well, this is the end of all your hopes and dreams. Somehow it hasn't been. It must have been a great many people thought like that. But before any of those hopes and dreams come true, there's a lot to be done. A lot of hard work and a lot of hard fighting. What are you smiling at? You. You get so hit up about things. <laughs> Sorry, I should have brought my soapbox. How's the beer going? I'm relying on you to finish it. No one ever touches it here. What do you keep it for, then? Oh, stray cats. Saves the milk. I shouldn't think it's very good for their morals. I get no complaints from the neighbours. I'm pretty tired. Do you think they'll invade us? Hmm? Do you think they'll invade us? Sure of it. If the Germans think they can get away with it. I used to think that wars only happened to soldiers, sailors, airmen, and foreigners. But here it is, right in our own front garden. I think we've all made up our minds at last that we aren't going to land ourselves in this sort of a mess again. Well, I'm going to bed.
Good morning, sir. Good morning. What a dreadful night it was. You were sleeping like a baby when I peeked in first thing. It seemed a shame to wake you. My sister always Where's said... Miss Bennett? Oh, she went out early. Told me to give you a cup of coffee and the paper when you woke. Thank you. Where's that girl gone? You're referring to Miss Bennett. I expect she's gone to her office. I'd like to wring her neck. You'll do nothing of the kind. Two pins, I'd ring yours and your sister's. Oh, I never. What about the Fred? Morning, Sarge. Morning. Ring up to the office and see if Miss Bennett's in. Well, Mr. George Bartman, please, Miss Bennett. I just come to you this morning, sir. Mm -hmm, sure. She's not in. Well, ask if they know where she's gone. Hello. Can you find out where she is for Mr. Randall? You're going to find out. I go before the RAF selection board the day after tomorrow. Good luck, sir. Hello? She's gone to the East London Hospital. And I'm to tell you that Mr. Lamb was telephoned here several times this morning. Mm, I was afraid of that. So long, sir. So long, sir. It was awful. It was so dark. When they found him under all that rubble, he was still hugging his teddy bear. He's telling everybody that Teddy has saved his life. Could I see Mr. Trapes, please? Trapes? Treffer, Tanya, Trapes. Oh, he was discharged this morning. He insisted on going. Have you any idea where to? He asked his home address. Oh, March Street. Now, that was bombed uh, last night. Oh, let me see. Perhaps you'd better try his employers. Uh, Messrs. Stannard and Porter, 26 Rexington Street. Thank you very much. How much are you, sir? Four and six, sir, please. Thank you, sir. Why, oh, Mr. Trapes? I want to see Mr. Stannard. Is he in his office? Yes, but Mr. Falter and Mr. Prout are with him. Why, oh, Mr. Trapes, what's the matter? I must see Mr. Stannard now. Come in. Well, that seems to me to come under the heading of conveyancing, Falter. That's your department, Prout. Uh, uh, yes, Trapes? Could I see you, Mr. Stannard? Good heavens, Trapes, what's the matter with them? I... I was bombed out last night. I've been in the hospital. Why, men? You're ill. No, no. That doesn't matter. What is it, Trapes? I... They bombed Marchman Street to the ground. Look, I... I'm in the papers this morning. Look, Trapes, you're badly shaken. Hadn't you better go away for a rest? No, no. I'm going to publish a statement. In the Gazette? Yes. Telling them that I've been wrong. Martian, you know what I mean. You've suffered too. I realize now that all those stories we heard about the Germans bombing helpless civilians were true. Warsaw was true. Rotterdam was true. And your society, Trapes? What about that? I've finished with them. My statement makes that quite clear. You realize that it'll be a shock to the many people who believe in it? There never were many. Only a few of us who believed that the Nazis were civilized people. My dear Trapes, you know my views. But in the interest of your health alone, oughtn't you to reflect before you throw over the beliefs of years? Mr. Stannard, I thought you'd be glad. That's why I came to you straight away. Yes, yes, of course. My advice is simply that you should think it over. Take a short rest. Afterwards, yes. But now I must stay and see this through. I've called for an investigation. It involves Mr. Hayter. May I bring my friend at the Gazette? She was going to call at the hospital. And I, I must... What does he mean? Marshal, I don't understand. Proud, the Sperren sieht an Ausgang. What? You're not a Belgian. You're not a refugee at all. Why? You're Germans. 
You want society to go on. It helps you. Well, you're too late. I've sent my statement to the Gazette. It's in the post. You can't stop that. Can I see Mr. Traves, please? Your name, please? Miss Bennett. Would you mind waiting a moment? Thank you. Would you care to? No, thank you so much. Pretty bad raid last night, huh? Yes. Bad for the property business if this goes on. I suppose so. In the safe areas, of course, values will rise sky high. If that matters anymore. <laughs> yes. Will uh. you come this way, please? Oh, thank you. I'm Mr. Stannard. You want to see Mr. Trapes, I believe? Yes. Well, I'm afraid he isn't here. Uh, but won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Now, can I help you? Well, that's very kind of you, but I wanted to see him personally. A private matter? Well, no, not exactly. I'm on the Daily Gazette, and Mr. Trapes promised me a statement. May I ask what about? Oh, yes, in connection with the People for Peace Association. Ah. Oh. I see. In that case, I'd better explain. Mr. Trapes is no longer with us. He's gone? Oh, yes. We were forced to dismiss him on account of the activities that you mentioned. When was this? Uh, last week. And he's not been back since? No. I'm the last person to victimize anyone for their opinions. Isn't that so, Falter? Yes, quite so. But when we discovered that his society was actually circulating defeatist propaganda, I thought it time to call a halt. Now, that's a pity. I think I should tell you that he's changed his views. Really? Oh, well, that puts rather a different complexion on it. But perhaps he's left London. I shall have to find him, that's all. And if you don't? I will. Mustn't miss a story, eh? Especially not one like this. I shall find Mr. Trapes or perish in the attempt. If by any chance, I'll see you in a minute, Mr. Haver. Right. If he should come back here, I'll tell him to get in touch with you. If you would. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. I see Miss Bennett, Thomas Mr. Grayson. Thank you, sir. How did you get here? I followed you. Did you like my story? No, I did not. Have you found Trapes? Well, he's disappeared. I told you to lay off the little man. Why didn't you? You're excelling yourself this morning, aren't you? I see. Where have you put the little man? He is in there. Pilot is looking after him. You better stay here, Fulton. Give me the East London Hospital's outpatient department. And after that, I want the bow relief centres. Now, you're the woman I want, Carol. You did a nice job with that tube shelter story of yours. Now I'm sending you down to Dover. Here's the special permit. You're to cover the women of Dover under shell fire. But, Mr. Denton, I'm, I'm following up that statement that the Little Peace Society man promised me. Woman, this is a story that justifies the invention of printing. These women are arguing with the grocer within range of the German guns. You're here to prove you're a journalist. Now, don't argue. You have just time to get your things and catch the 1150. Yes, Mr. Denton. Cancel that hospital call. Oh, try the Gazette again. Come in. Ah. So you've got my message at last. All right, Hedges. Now listen. This is the first and last time I shall ever trust a reporter. You gave me your word. Well, don't blame me. I didn't print the thing. One of our staff reporters, a girl called Bennett. What? I just had a flaming row with her. <laughs> Women. God bless them. Yeah. Sit down. <clears throat> Thank you. Is it true? It's true, all right. Well, now they'll be after him. You understand, Trips? You must have it back unopened. No. No. Hater. <laughs> Hello. Hello, is that the Daily Gazette? Uh, could I speak to Miss Carol Bennett, please? My father says you can tell if they're Germans by the sound of their engines. You know, they sort of miss a beat. Yes, that's right. <laughs> My wife said one whistle clean over the house. Hello, Randall, you're early. Sounded just like an express train. Hello. Here? Who? Just a minute. Where's Bennett? George! Where's Bennett? Dover, Packet Boat Hotel. She's gone down to get a story from the housewife's angle. If it's urgent, you can get her later at the Packet Boat Hotel, Dover. Right. She's been sent to Dover. We must get that statement back from her tonight. Trapes will ask her to come back. Yes. Trapes is a story to her. Hater, you can keep him up to it. Oh, Miss 
Penny, a message has just come for you. Who from? Will you please ring Central 10,000, Daily Gazette, most important. Would you get me the number? Ring Central 10,000. And tell them it's press priority. Yes? Oh, good. Put her through. Hello, Carol. Now, listen, my dear. I've got some news for you. Yes? A wire from the steamship company has just come in. Your passage is booked and you sail in 36 hours. I do what? You sail in 36 hours. It's Venice. Yes, I thought you'd be pleased. Well, you better forget that assignment and come back here right away. Yes, I see. Look, I haven't been here very long and I'd like to stay and finish the job. There'll be time. I'll telephone the story through and go to my flat first thing in the morning, all right? Well, just as you think. Only take care of yourself. Thanks. So long and congratulations. Bennett is leaving for America. So I gather. Yes. She's staying down at Dover tonight. Mm. We'll miss her. Well, I, I guess the people can stagger along without her somehow. Oh, Bob, it's talking it's... about Dover, we're starting an outpost of Britain feature. Bennett is doing the woman's angle. I have a, a permit here to look over our big guns. Uh, who do you think we might send? Well, there's, um, the Bateman. Mm, he's away with the convoy. There is Atkins, of course, but I thought being army stuff would be more up your street. Well, whatever you say. Very well, then you better get the next train. Right, thank you. You've got exactly 30 minutes. What? It leaves in half an hour. Holy smoke, see you tomorrow. Give her my love. Good evening. Is Miss Bennett in the hotel? I think you'll find her in the dining room, straight through into the lake. Thanks, and I'd like a room for tonight. Can you manage that? Oh, yes, sir. Hello. Hello, what are you doing here? Covering a story on the Housewives of Dover. Of course, if you think it's more in your line, go right ahead. Don't worry about me. You needn't worry. I won't. Denton sent me down to take a peek at some of the big guns. I'm hoping to see some of the coastal batteries tomorrow. May I sit down? You can't be under the impression that you're standing up. Uh, you're taking the dinner, sir. What else is there? Well, uh, there is only the dinner, sir. Well, then, I think I'd better have the dinner. Very good, sir. Look here, about this morning's um, incident. I've forgotten that already. The way we bicker, anyone would think we were married. We're making a big mistake. Yes. I wasn't just trying to put you off your story this morning. You see, I learned that Trapes and his society are being watched by the authorities. And I was warned that they may be dangerous. Bob, why on earth didn't you tell me all this before? Well, I was told not to, till after I left you today. As you're leaving for America. You are still going, I suppose. Of course. Well, I, I just thought you ought to know, that's all. Thanks. Sort of clear things up? Yes. Carol, about your going to America. Yes. I've been thinking. And the way I look at it is this. Are you sure you really want to go? Must you go? You wouldn't, for instance, stay here and marry me, would you? Bob, you're a darling. But... Well, it's America. No, Bob. Well, there it is. You know your own mind. I suppose I do. It's nice to know you'll be out of all this anyway. What's happening to your dinner? Oh, haven't I had that yet? Miss, there's a telephone call for you from London. Oh, thank you. Bet you they've cancelled your boat at the last minute. Bet you they haven't. Hello? Yes, this is Carol Bennett. Here she is. You know what to say, Trapes. Miss Bennett. Mr. Trapes. Yes. I sent a letter to your office. I must have it back tonight. I... 
wasn't quite myself when I sent it. I must see you. I must go with you to your office to get it. I don't refuse. Hold on one minute, will you? When's the next train to London? There's one at 8.32, miss. Thanks. I'll leave on the 8.32 for London. Now, don't worry. Meet the train at Victoria. I wonder where we are now. We'll be in in two or three minutes. Oh, good. Why? I'm worried about little trips. So am I. The more I think of it, the less I like it. Perhaps you will tell Miss Bennett that Mr. Stannard has kindly brought you here in his car. You will then go together to the newspaper office and collect your letter. I'll be with you, Trapes. The train is signaled now. Remember, Trapes, everything will be all right if you do as you have been told. But don't try any tricks. No. Come on. No. Tell him to turn the car around. Miss Bennett, look out. They're all... Drop that. Come out! Nice work, boys. Got that lot. Take him away. I got them. Um. Oh, they only got his shoulder. Him poor Germans. Are Germans? Yes, yes, I know. German. How is he? Well, he'll be all right. You're Miss Bennett, aren't you? Yes. My name's Lamb. Oh, Bob Randall's told me about you. Go on, Bennett. What did Trapes want? Well, he sent me a statement at the Gazette and then he wanted it back. Where's Randall? He went after the man who fired first. Well, it makes a nice change from bombs, don't it? My mistake. The parcel queue in there. Randall's got him. Is he hurt? Who? Bob. <laughs> no, but the other fellow is. Tell the boys to take him away. I want to question him tonight. Right. Hello. Hello. Did you get the lot? Yes. Thanks for your message. Stopped me dying with my wife. I haven't seen her for six weeks, however. Business before pleasure. Were they Nazi agents? Yes. I did a little burglary in Stannard's office after I got your message. They handled some interesting property in the neighborhood of military objectives. Oh, oh signaling to bombers, eh? Yes, probably. Hmm. Well, we must get back to the office. I'll take back all I said about newspaper men. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, and newspaper women. Thank you. Taxi. It's a good thing we've got this story to take back to the office. Don't you mind that we left the Dover stuff? Taxi. I've never even got near the big guns. Hey. You're not by any chance thinking of publishing any of this, are you? Oh, yes, so. of course. 
Not a word. Oh, but look. Sorry, not even a little man's statement. You see, it's not... In the public interest. Is that an order? Yes. Well, what you say goes. Good. Goodbye again. Goodbye. Sorry I can't give you a lift. Gazette Office, Fleet Street. I'm all right. Mind how you go. The lift ain't working. Can we use the stairs? Yes. What's it like up there? We're pretty bad, miss. They're sorting themselves out now. Oh, hello, Carol. There's a direct hit on the corner of the building. Anybody, um... Mr. Wigmore. Wiki? Oh, hello, Jimmy. Are you all right? Yes, miss. Well, then why aren't you whistling? I bit my lip, miss. Well, oh, I'm all right. Never mind me. We've just verified it. The juice has gone at the main. The presses are all right. They can be gas-driven. But the liners are conked out. No light, no power, no phone. Hmm. Well, we'll see what Robertson thinks. Get him to come here at once. Well, this is a pretty mess, isn't it? How are you feeling? No, I'm all right. It's nothing. They got Wigmore, eh? Uh, yes, there's a fire post on the roof. Oh, saying how unlucky it was to be born under Scorpio. I, I used to pull his leg. Weren't you born under Scorpio yourself, I said? Yes, I said, oh, but, uh, what of him? How have you been? On a story? Mm -hmm. The greatest story of the year, huh? We can't publish it. Mm, your friend Lam, I suppose. Well, what the heck is the use of a story you can't publish anyhow? We'll be lucky if we publish anything tonight. Well, as you haven't got a story, perhaps have a look around and see if you've lost anything personal. All right. You got a cigarette? I hope so. Oh, Mr. Denton. Yeah. Robinson, there's something to tell you. Mm -hmm. Well, sir, there's a couple of line notes the lads will switch back onto gas. We'll work on in relays by lamplight. You can manage? I think we can, sir. That's the spirit. I printed this paper by lamplight when it started 150 years ago. We'll do the same tonight, tomorrow night, I and every other night if necessary. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to press in an hour. So let's get going. Here's a handful of the leader page. Oh, today's leader. I wrote it myself. I don't suppose you people ever read the leaders in this damn newspaper. But you're going to listen to one now. And like it. The people of Britain know that night after night, through autumn and through winter, they must meet the German attack in their own streets. Marshal Goering announces that he strikes at us because we are the heart. Very well. The heart will go on beating. There are loved ones to avenge. There are all our hopes for the future to fight for. There is the most damnable tyranny which has ever threatened mankind to destroy. Knowing this, knowing what we're about, we say bombs will never break us. Panic will never stampede us. Britain will stick it out. <laughs> 